Hi everyone, welcome. I am here at Black Hat with Tomer Goldschmidt of Team 82. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Good to see you, man. Uh, so I wanna to talk to you about uh, some research that you did not too long ago, um, where you looked at, well, you used a, a virtual factory pla as a platform kind of for threat modeling, for showing all these dependencies between OT devices on a factory floor and obviously attacking them. So I'd love to hear kind of how you got into this research and, and obviously what you, what you yeah. found. Of course. So at Clarity Team 82, we do research with uh, many types of devices. Uh, we do research with devices such as OT equipment, PLCs, HMIs. We also do research about, of um, like software that is used in OT and industrial facilities and also in the medical sector. So when beginning this research, we, we really tried to convey the idea of an attack against a factory, an industrial facility, mm -hmm. in order to really help uh, industry uh, people understand what is happening when an attack such as these attacks like Stuxnet and Triton sure. uh, happen. So this was the incentive in the beginning, and we went with it, actually. Yeah. So it's really important to kind of visualize these things. It really helps, yeah. right? Yeah. So Making it more visualized, we really took a platform called Factory.io in order to visualize the factory. We had machinery that is placed in virtual environment, and we hooked up a real PLC in our laboratory uh, to the factory in order to control the whole procedure of the factory. We had uh, conveyor belts, and we had uh, turning tables and sensors, and all of this to really make the um, the modeling of the attack as real as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we wrote a couple of research blogs on this, mm -hmm. and there's some demos and there's some gifs of yeah. the, kind of the conveyor belt running as it should. Yeah. And it's real simplistic, but it, it definitely helps yeah. see it where, where it kind of goes off the rails after it's attacked. We go we go all all through the procedure of engineering a factory. Like we go through the component of the e e engineering workstation on how to program a PLC in order to control the machinery, the actuators, and the sensors. Mm -hmm. And we really tried to go through all the baseline of a factory yeah. in order to really understand what will be the focus of an attack in a factory. Mm -hmm. And so w why do you think that it, that kind of environment is that attractive? Is it the way that there's a lot of dependencies between these devices, or is it something else? I think if you're talking about the incentive of an attacker, yes, yes. okay, so there's, there are three main um, aspects that might incentivize an attacker to attack such facilities. One would be the, maybe the most simplistic one will be the financial gain. Maybe um, trying to disrupt a procedure of a, a facility and maybe r make a ransom in order to gain... Um, some profit. <laughs> yeah, some profit. And there's other aspects that might come up. Um, for example, the espionage part, um, geopolitical aspects are also in that front. Sure. Yeah, the, the, all of the stories about Fuxnet and also the attack, the famous attack of Saxnet. Mm -hmm. All of our examples of espionage procedures and yeah. really campaigns that were taken through with not the financial gain in the aspect, in the main focus, but the disruption of a, of a procedure right. and gaining more in-depth information of yeah. facilities. I'm glad you brought up Fluxnet, which is a separate uh, research that Team 82 did, but yeah. you, you're starting to see these consequences where it's not just disruption, there's a possible impact to public safety, to yeah. personal safety, public health, and, and yeah. so forth. So in, uh, in our daily uh, research, we, we actually took uh, several projects that really tried to investigate such campaigns. For example, you, you discussed about Fuxnet. Yeah. There was also the Unitronics attack that Noam spoke about. Yes. Um, so really, you can see quite a, um, a, an, a process that is undergoing of geopolitical actors and entities that try to use this uh, realm Mm -hmm. The cyber realm, in order to affect the real, the real, the reality, actually, sure. the lives of people and the communities we live in. Mm -hmm. So you may see critical infrastructure in every aspect of your daily lives. Right. You may see it in 
water treatment facilities. You may see it in gas pipelines, um, fuel pumps, everything, mm. even in your hospitals. Right. So it becomes more of a front than it was used to be. Right. That's yeah. a great point. So just going back to your research, the original mm -hmm. question, just kind of what do you hope users take from it as they kind of read the blog? And, and I know we did a webinar on it. Yeah. There's a lot of information about so what you did. There, was two, there were two parts to this project. There yeah. was the part of taking the, the viewer, the uh, engineer, or the not quite savvy in the cyber realm sure. um, to the procedures undergoing when a, a facility is working. But then there's the other part, which is actually our main focus and the real stuff we wanted to go to, uh, which is the attack part, the threat modeling. Um, how an attacker will uh, engage with a factory that is, it is able to exfiltrate. Mm -hmm. For instance, you may see factories around the globe with uh, exposed equipment on the internet. So we want to take apart all of this um, of all of this system of equipment and devices in order to really understand what an attack could be do, doing. Sure. Yeah. So in the second part, what was important for us was to really showcase what an attacker might do. For instance, we took a, an example of an attacker that is, a, is at remote location, trying to infiltrate a facility, enabling him to, well, actually, it, the attacker had uh, the, the communication channel to the PLC and was able to subvert the, the dur using this channel yeah. to, uh, to subvert the process undergoing in the facility. So we did actually a live demo of this kind of attack. Right. Um, so this was the, act the acute part in our, in our case because we wanted to showcase how much impact could an attacker have on a facility when he it just from a remote place, from a, I don't know, yeah. from a facility in somewhere, uh, gaining that kind of impact, how mm -hmm. crucial it could be. Yeah. And just going back to the original point, just visualizing this, being yeah, able to see yeah. it is so powerful. Yeah. The actual visualizing this, this attack and this equipment in an accessible way is enough to convey the message yeah. that this kind of attacks may happen, and this kind of um, systems and infrastructure is in every aspect of our lives. Sure. You may see it in a warehouse, and in actually, I, t I talked about it, but many places, and it could happen in places you won't really expect mm -hmm. it to happen. All right, great stuff, Tomer. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much, you man. Thank you so much.